Denmark is one of the Scandinavian countries located in Northern Europe. And it has a great and influential history in the rest of its neighboring Scandinavian countries and the rest of Europe. The origin of the name Denmark The etymology of the word Denmark is not known exactly. However, some literature says that the word Denmark is divided into two parts, Dan, and Mark. As for Dan, it means the flat land. As for Mark, it means the jungle. Or border land. Humans inhabited Denmark about 12,000 years ago. The Danish people are among the peoples known as Vikings. And that during the 8th century, and until the 11th. The Vikings are Norse Germanic people. They inhabited the Scandinavian regions in Northern Europe. Viking explorers were the first to reach Iceland and settle there. And that was in the 9th century AD. The Vikings had a great skill in shipbuilding, and this was used to invade parts of France and the British Islands. As many of them were involved in trade, that's what made them influential along the coasts and rivers of Europe. The Danish Vikings were active in Britain, Ireland and France. They settled parts of England, where they had settlements in Ireland and Normandy. At the beginning of the 9th century, the Christian Empire of Charlemagne reached the southern border of Denmark. He was in the area at the time, a king named Godfred, who appeared in Holstein. He owned a naval fleet. And this king has established a diplomatic relationship with the Franks. In the year 815 St. Ansgar traveled to cities in Denmark, and began introducing the inhabitants to the Christian religion. And I called them to Catholicism. And the Danes converted to Catholicism officially in the year 965 AD. After the end of the 11th century, Denmark transitioned from a system of a mixture of local leaders, with a weak royal institution, to a European system consisting of a powerful king who rules through a class of influential nobles in society.
Denmark witnessed during this period, an internal conflict, and a weak political position. Where, after that, Denmark was subject to the German influence. At that time, the country witnessed the emergence of stone buildings, most of which were churches. The Kingdom of Denmark has reached its zenith in the expansion, in the era of Valdemar II. And he was the one who led the formation of the Danish Empire in the Baltic Sea. In the year 1221, this empire extended its control over Estonia in the east, and even Norway in the north. After the death of Valdemar II in 1241, and until the beginning of the reign of Valdemar IV in 1340, the kingdom entered a period of decline. Because of the internal conflicts between the sons of Valdemar II, these conflicts led to the separation of the seven parts of the Kingdom of Denmark to become duchies or semi-autonomous districts. In the reign of Valdemar IV, Denmark regained its strength. After that, the Kingdom of Denmark entered into an alliance with Norway and Sweden. This union was called the Kalmar Union. It was believed that this union would make them a great power in the north. And after that, this union remained in a tug of war, until Sweden seceded from the federation. Then it was annexed again, and that happened several times. In the year 1523, Sweden exited from this union, and Denmark remained in a bilateral union with Norway until the year 1814. And after that, the separation took place between them. Between the 17th and 18th centuries, Denmark entered into many wars with Sweden. In the late 18th century, during the Napoleonic Wars, Denmark was then neutral between the warring parties. Thus, its neutrality allowed it to establish commercial relations between all the parties to the war. And it tried to maintain its neutrality at all times, so that it could benefit from the profitable trade exchange with France, Great Britain. Therefore, it joined the neutral countries, which include Russia, Sweden and Prussia. But Britain considered this Danish neutrality an act of hostility and attacked Copenhagen. And that was from the beginning of the year 1801 and until the year 1807, where the British Navy destroyed the Danish fleet and burned parts of the capital Copenhagen. 
which led to the end of the era of Danish prosperity. A sea war broke out between Denmark and Britain. Britain was able to control the sea crossings between Denmark and Norway. What led to the bankruptcy of the Danish-Norwegian Federation, in 1803? During a conference in Vienna, which was held after the Napoleonic Wars, the demand was made to dismantle the union between Denmark and Norway. Denmark tried to regain the Scandinavian Federation again in 1809, but its attempts were unsuccessful. After Sweden rejected, When European tensions arose in 1848, Denmark became a constitutional monarchy. It happened peacefully. After the Second Schleswig War in 1864, Denmark was forced to surrender Schleswig and Holstein in favor of Prussia. And after that, Denmark reverted once again to a policy of neutrality. This continued during the First World War. After the end of the First World War, the forces of the Allies made an offer to Denmark to return to the region of Schleswig and Holstein. But Denmark, fearing the German ambitions, refused that. And it insisted on holding a popular referendum on this matter in 1920. And after the referendum, and the king signed the reunification document. After that, King Christian X, the King of Denmark, crossed the old border on the back of a white horse. With this, Denmark reclaimed northern Schleswig. During World War II, German troops invaded Denmark in 1940. It took only two hours of military resistance, and then the Danish government surrendered to the German forces. After that, there was economic cooperation between Denmark and Germany, which remained until 1943. The Danish government then refused to cooperate with the Germans, and Denmark was able to sink many of its ships so that the Germans would not benefit. A large number of Danish officers have also been sent to neutral Sweden. Denmark also rescued a large number of Danish Jews, and sent them to Sweden. And that was a little while before the siege of Denmark by the Germans.
and the Danes also carried out sabotage operations on German installations. In the meantime, Iceland severed its link with Denmark, and became an independent republic. And after the Second World War, Denmark was one of the founding members of the United Nations. And also a founding member of the North Atlantic Alliance, NATO. Denmark is now one of the developed European countries, both in the economic field and in social services. It is ranked among the highest countries in terms of income level. It is also ranked number one in the world as the happiest place in the world, based on health, social care and education standards. It's also the least corrupt country in the world. Thank you for watching the video, and we are happy to subscribe to the channel, and do not forget to support us by clicking the like button.